Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. It was an emotional scene today at a church in Anne Arundel County following a hate crime incident. The Kingdom Celebration Center was vandalized over the weekend and racist graffiti defaced the church property. Today, the NAACP and other civil rights organizations held a press conference on the hate crimes in Maryland. Church leader Antonio Parker spoke out about the incident. I was sad to see such hatred targeted against people of goodwill. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was appalled that such hatred persists during a time when our country needs healing. Mm -hmm. But today, I didn't wake up sad. Well, indeed. Well, indeed. Right. I woke up more determined to fight yeah. against yeah. evil with good. Yeah. Yeah. I woke up more determined to help deal with the food desert that our county faces. I woke up more determined to help teenage parents get their high school diploma and provide them with career readiness. I woke up more determined to help minimize homelessness in our county, especially among our displaced veterans. The Kingdom Celebration Center is inviting residents, elected officials, and others to its Sunday service at 11 o'clock as a show of support. The church is at 952 Annapolis Road in Gambrills. And this Saturday marks the day when the National Suicide Prevention Hotline transitions from the 10-digit 800 number to the much easier to remember 3-digit number 988. Today, officials with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services unveiled that the new number at a high till crisis services center, 988 is for anyone experiencing thoughts of suicide, substance abuse, or other mental health issues. When you call this now three-digit number, otherwise ten-digit number, it first links you to the nearest local center in our network across 50 states. If that center is busy, it rolls over to national backup centers to make sure that all of our contacts are answered. Now, that's really important, and it's important to note that this service, Crisis Community Services of, here in Maryland, is the only service in our national network that not only provides local services for Maryland, but also backs up the country in terms of providing national backup chat services, phone services, and text services. And they respond to national Spanish language subnetwork calls. Amazing work. Again, the new number goes into effect on Saturday. Well, the county council approves the resolution to develop a climate action plan for Prince George's County. It establishes a countywide emissions reduction goal to be 50 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. It also directs the Department of Environment to lead the lead to implement 26 priority recommendations across government entities. Two years ago, the county council adopted my climate action resolution to set up a climate action commission. The commission worked for a year and a half. We came up with a plan. And it's now been uh, presented to the county council for adoption by resolution. The resolution, which passed unanimously, also adapts a countywide goal of achieving carbon neutra neutrality by 2050. Well, the cost of parking fines may still go up in Prince George's County. County Executive Angela also Brooks wrote to the county council in May, proposing an increase in parking penalties and fees. Today, council began debating her plan that would more than double some fines, including penalties for standing or parking at bus stops. The measure would also authorize the impoundment of vehicles without prior notice to owners. Well, the House Select Committee tasked with investigating the January 6th insurrection held its seventh hearing this afternoon. This time, the panel focused on the role that far-right groups like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers played in the attack on the Capitol. The hearing also discussed how former President Trump and his allies encouraged supporters, especially the domestic extremist groups, to come to the district on January 6th. In the wee hours of December 19th, dissatisfied with his options, Donald Trump decided to call for a large and wild crowd on Wednesday, January 6th, the day when Congress would meet to certify the electoral votes. Never before in American history had a president called for a crowd to come contest the counting of electoral votes by Congress or engaged in any effort designed to influence, delay, or obstruct the joint session of Congress in doing its work required by our Constitution in the Electoral Count Act. Raskin also says that Trump's outside advisors brought to the White House back in December of 2020 a drafted executive order that proposed an immediate mass collection of all state election machines by the U.S. military. 
And you're watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. Back in just a bit, a big day up ahead for NASA. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. The trees stand tall. Mother, mother, you tell me to stay rooted. The trees' roots go deep. You tell me to focus on my breath, and the trees breathe for the earth. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? Will you be the kind that makes shade, or the kind that shows a new way? Might you be the kind to hug, or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. The child had a few more questions after that, and the forest had plenty of answers. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Why is ambition respected in men and criticized in women? We may think ambition in women is a good thing, but because of a lifetime of cultural stereotypes, we react negatively. That's unconscious bias. But can unconscious bias really limit women's success? Well, when asked to draw a leader, the vast majority of people, both men and women, draw a man. When we imagine positions of power, we erase women from the picture. Today, only 5% of CEOs are women. It's time to challenge cultural stereotypes and outmoded mindsets. The world is a better place when we support one another's ambitions, whatever they may be. Together, let's question the biases that hold people back. Voice our ambition proudly, without apology. Model ambition for our sons and daughters. Our ambition is to challenge double standards to help achieve women's equality. What's yours? I'm Mindy Kaling, and I embrace ambition. Welcome back. Despite the increased demand for mail-in ballots, election officials say Maryland voters continue to head to the polls. Today marks day six of the state's early voting period. Election officials say as of yesterday, about 79,000 Marylanders had voted in person. However, local election offices across the state have processed almost a half million requests for mail-in ballots. Elections officials say residents who aren't yet registered can do so at an early voting location or on election day critical for those voters that aren't already registered to vote. Uh, maybe they just missed the deadline or maybe they just moved here and they didn't realize they had to do this. Uh, so it provides an opportunity for a voter, for an individual who isn't already registered to vote to do that. And we've been seeing voters in the last five days take advantage of that opportunity. Today is the deadline to turn in your absentee ballot request. The County Board of Elections Office must receive your request by 8 tonight. Residents have until 1159 this evening to fill out the form online. Well, Maryland State Police are seeing a surge in applications for concealed carry permits. It follows the U.S. Supreme Court decision striking down a New York law. The department has released numbers from June 23rd to July 11th of this year compared with the same time in 2021. The total number of applications increased from 1,014 to more than 7,000. Meantime, the high court's ruling is having an impact on decisions made by the Maryland Appeals Court. The Court of Special Appeals ruled on July 1st that the state's denial of a Somerset County man's wear and carry permit is unconstitutional. Well, a pedestrian who was hit by a car in Palmer Park last week has died. The victim has been identified as 53-year-old Jackie Monroe of Hyattsville. The incident happened on the night of July 5th on the 8,000 block of Barlow Road. Investigators say he was attempting to cross the street but was not in the crosswalk at the time. He was taken to the local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The driver of police say did remain on the scene. You may have seen a lot of hype overnight about special images just released from NASA. The extent of publicity was the lead-up to an international event today hosted by Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt. The James Webb Space Telescope has produced five new images of the universe, known as Webb's first deep field. The deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date was revealed. The image of a galaxy cluster overflows with detail. Uh, started in 1995, we had just finished measuring the Big Bang. We measured it with a cosmic background explorer satellite that we built right here at Goddard. And we measured the spectrum. We measured there are hot and cold spots in the Big Bang. So we said, now we know it all, how it all got started. But then what happened after that? So then I got a call from NASA headquarters. Would I like to work on this new telescope that's going to help answer those questions? This stunning vista of the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula reveals new details about this vast stellar nursery. 
Today, for the first time, we're seeing brand new stars that were previously completely hidden from our view. The first image released covers a path of sky approximately the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson says it represents just a tiny sliver of the vast universe. And more news in a bit. Stay tuned on Byron Sky. I don't remember how it started. Oh. Oh, Our back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. I moved to Florida with literally pennies in my pocket and a prayer. I needed a new start. Dacian looks like a very typical three-year-old until you ask him, what's your name? How old are you? My son has a lot of behaviors that would show as being autistic. Most kids can tolerate a variety of foods, but unfortunately for Dacian, everything has to be organic and raw. I wasn't ashamed to go to the food pantries. It's expensive to eat healthy, and nutrition is very important to Dacian's health. The healthy, organic food that we receive dramatically helped his social skills. Most people would say, she really doesn't have much of a life. But to me, I have everything right there next to me and my son. Welcome back. A former Hyattsville travel agent faces up to five years in prison after pleading guilty to fraud. Prosecutors say Lorena Aguilar defrauded numerous victims out of money from 2018 to 2019. She accepted money in exchange for booking flights that were never actually booked. Aguilar will be sentenced on August 24th. Well, community colleges have seen a steep decline in enrollment across the nation, including here in Prince George's County. In fact, public colleges across the state saw a decline of more than 6 percent between 2018 and 2021. But Maryland's oldest HBCU, Bowie State University, seems to be bucking that trend. It has seen about a 3 percent growth since 2017, and applications are up since the last year by 37 percent. The University of Maryland College Park is also an exception. It's seeing an increase in enrollment as well. Well, students who need to be vaccinated before heading back to school are in luck. The Prince George's County Health Department is offering free vaccine clinics for students ages 5 to 18. The state requires students to receive regular vaccines prior to returning to school. Students can also receive vaccines tomorrow, regardless of health insurance coverage, at Bladensburg High School from 9 to 3. Appointments are required and can be made by visiting MarylandVax.org. Let's get a quick look now to weather forecast tonight. Heavy rain with a low near 71 tomorrow. Mostly sunny with a high around 89 Thursday. Mostly sunny again with a high near 87 and Friday. Mostly sunny and a chance of thunderstorms with a high around 83. And now for the community calendar, join the U.S. Naval Academy Band in the park this weekend. The Blues and Gold Band will be performing classic blues by artists such as B.B. King and Muddy Waters and blues infused music by such artists as Eric Clapton. The performance takes place Sunday, July 17th at 7 p.m. at Allen Pond Park. The concert is free, open to all. No tickets are required. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.